Uh, yes, sir. My question is, what is your opinion on the closing of E.E. E. Waddell High School? Well, my opinion on it is uh, it's, it's very multi-layered. Um, as mayor, I didn't have any authority or, or responsibility or accountability for that decision. It's entirely up to the superintendent of the school board to do something like that. Um, so that's the first point. The second point is uh, that I do think um, our community uh, has has uh, had um, uh, a series of similar types of closings in the past. Um, in fact, on Monday, the city council heard from the speaker who was talking about the second Ward high school that had been closed back in the 1960s. There's still a gigantic source of 
<coughs> in the African community, African American community in Charlotte because the decision was made to close its high school uh, more than 40 years ago that was a high school that uh, grew up uh, in educating so many African Americans. Um, so I think this Waddell school closing sort of um, tore the scab off of that, uh, that issue. Uh, the third thing I think is that, um, going back to this, um, kids who went to Waddell High School, um, I think if I were talking to them, I would say, you've got to, despite how you feel, you've got to recognize that in life you're going to confront this sometimes. And you know, this is Waddell last year, this is Waddell this year. And that doesn't have to mean that you're not successful in life. You have to, you have to sometimes steel yourself against things that happen that you don't like, and find a way to be successful in spite of it, and not to use it as an excuse to fail. So um, I think that uh, that's a message that I would convey uh, to kids who went there. Cameron. Cameron, would you ever try to run the president? Would I ever try to run the president? <laughs> I don't know, Sean's keeping me pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, yes. Well, and are you in charge of CMS's budget? No. Jordan. You always do. That's good. Jordan, and like you said, you grew up on Baby Sport. And I don't know if Baby Sport was anything like it is now when you were a kid. Exactly like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, going through your life and now that you're married, so you kind of grew up against the quote unquote hood. What, what would you change? What is anything you would change in your life? No. Um, you know, honestly, the great thing about this for me is that is that when you get to this point, you are part of all of it. You know, like. I didn't, I didn't leave behind any part of my experience to get here. It actually informed how I, how I got there. You know, for example, you know when you're running for mayor of the city, you represent everybody. You don't just represent people who live in South Charlotte or people who live in East Charlotte or someplace else. And um, you know, part of my success, I believe, is the fact that when I go to the Baytis Fort Road Court, well, people know that that's where I came from. You know, and so. You know, it's not, um, I look at my, my growing up as part of my success, not something that I, I you know, succeeded in spite of. Listen, I'm trying to get the people in. How, uh, um, what was your thought process on um, running for mayor? What was your thought process on running for mayor? My thought process, my wife didn't think I had a thought process. <laughs> uh, but the, the thought process was uh, the, city, the city needed to be more responsive uh, to all of the voices in the community. And for a long time, I felt like it was responsible to all of you. And um, so part of why I ran was to challenge things, to give the city an opportunity to make a real choice. And um, you know, it was the longest campaign we've ever had for mayor. Um, I debated more than 40 times over the course of probably six, six or seven months um, between myself and my opponent at the time. We raised more money than any uh, pair of candidates have raised for a mayor's campaign, and uh, it was a uh, you know ended up being. Um, you know, pretty tough race. And uh, by the way, uh, this is another lesson for you, that uh, during the course of running, uh, there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of things that happened that were, um, that were designed to um, create the impression that I was losing the race. I remember there were two instances where there were polls. You know what polls are? when somebody goes and calls people and asks them what, who they're going to vote for and people say which way, whichever way. They did two polls. And, you know, Charlotte has 
um, you know, X many Democrats, it has X many African Americans, X many Republicans in attendance. Well, they, you know, when you do a poll, you always try to do it based on who actually likes to vote, you know. And the polls they put out they were polls where they were polling like 90% Republicans and asking them who they were going to vote for. And then the poll came back and showed me 20 points behind. Well, of course it's going to be 20 points behind. We don't have 90% Republicans in Charlotte. Uh, but once that poll gets thrown out there, people start saying, ooh, he's losing. And donors start uh, making decisions about how much to invest in one candidate or another based on how polls reflect. We knew the whole time that we were very competitive, and uh, we ended up winning. But uh, you know, sometimes when you're trying to do something, people will throw everything at the kitchen sink at you to keep you from doing it. But you have to just stay the course and do what you know is right. Uh, 